for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday morning, September the 6th, 1987. Labor Day weekend, teaching and deliverance camp meeting. Being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Irma and Glenn Miller are the speakers of the morning. This morning, I'm going to teach for a while, and then we may, may or may not, it depends on how the Lord moves, pray for people again as we did yesterday, and if we do, I ask the ministry to come help us. I've asked Brother Hood to stand with me if we do, and we're going to give you a little basis for being able or to be able to believe that Jesus hears and answers prayer. He's a life-changing experience with Jesus. And no matter how far we fall, he's there waiting to take us and hold us and pick us up and help us get brushed off and cleaned up and get back in the road serving him. Jesus is Lord, and his grace is sufficient for everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son for all the world. And if we call on him and on his name, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and heal us of all our infirmities. We haven't come this away just by chance, and neither have you. And as I look back over... Th- our lives, Irma and our and our families, I see that through the circumstances that have happened down through the, the, the years, the Lord has been continually preparing us for this hour and this day. We have had family problems within our family and our children that, are, that help us to understand the heartache and the sorrow of others who have, this, who have problems of daughters and sons and grandchildren. We have been through that and are still in the middle of it. We have had our, my folks have kind of made light of what we're doing here, but Irma's folks lived here and got up and walked off. Said we don't want any part of this. Been rejected by our parents. We came here and gave up everything we owned and imparted it into this place. And without knowing it, without realizing it, We gave up houses and land, mother and fathers, brothers and sisters. And then it came to the realization that that had taken place in our lives. So we don't stand here to be someone who does not feel heartache and sorrows, but you feel in these areas of your life. We were not aware 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that there was such a thing as deliverance and restoration. Oh, we were Pentecostal all the way. We didn't need any of that. We had it all. How foolish we were. How foolish we were. We still don't even have but just a drop in the bucket of what there is if we can reach out and accept it and take hold of it and learn how to apply the fact that it is written and to stand in the authority of that word and to be able to proclaim it and to see it come to pass in the name of the Lord Jesus. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby men may be saved, healed, or delivered, except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is Lord, and there is none other. I'm going to ask Irma to come and relate one of the things that has happened to us, that has shown us and brought us to have compassion on others that have come through the same this problem or similar problems. But over in Second Timothy, you don't need to look, look, that's all right. Over in Second Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, and in place of the spirit of fear, he's given us power and love and a sound mind. There's been times 
But some of us haven't had sound minds and maybe do not have today as we should have. The word of the Lord is able and sufficient to supply that which is lacking. I'm going to ask Irma to come and tell you of the circumstances that she and I went through in this area of our life. I'm going to read you a scripture first. It's in Job 36. In order to save time, I'm going to start at the fifth verse. Behold, God is mighty. Does everybody believe that? I wonder if we really know how mighty he is. Mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver, mighty to guide us. He's all of that and lots more. And despiseth not any. There's not one soul in here that God despiseth. He loves us all. He is mighty in strength, and he's mighty in wisdom. The Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him come and ask God, and he'll give us wisdom. We need wisdom every day. We need lots of wisdom here. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if, and this is where you and I come in, if they be bound in fetters and be holden in cords of affliction, how many understand what affliction is? Sicknesses. Then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. What does exceed mean? Sorry, I've gone overboard. They have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline. In this day and age, many people do not want any discipline at all. They don't want anybody to discipline them. They don't. Want, they want to do their own thing. They want to be rebellious. They want to. And I was once like that, I suppose. Although I grew up in an Assembly of God pastor's home, 1932, we were all saved, filled to spirit, came into early Pentecost, and I grew up. I was not rebellious toward my parents. I was not rebellious toward my teachers. I was always uh, uh, wanting to get my lessons. I never had that kind of rebellion. I was not, when I got older, I was not rebellion, rebellious toward my jobs, toward my bosses. I tried to do whatever they wanted done. I was loyal to them. But I still had rebellion and witchcraft in my heart. Rebe- rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, the Bible says. Isn't that right? I didn't know anything about witchcraft. I didn't know anything really about rebellion because I had never been rebellious. I had an older brother that was rebellious to my parents. I saw what it did to them as ministers. And and some of you ministers in here understand that uh, ministers' children can often cause their parents much grief because all of the saints are watching their children to see what they're going to do. I saw that. I didn't want to ever be rebellious toward my parents. He openeth their ear to discipline. The voice of the Lord would come to me, and I would listen, but I didn't always do. Is anybody like that? Yes. And commanded that they return from iniquity. Iniquity is when you know to do something, and then you don't do it. It becomes sin to us. This is a good verse. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Now, that's all I'm going to read right now. Does that speak to you, any of you? I grew up. We did. We threw all the medicine away when my parents got saved. They threw all medicine away. We never had an aspirin in the house or any other kind of medicine. We children knew nothing except praying for us when we were sick, and that was it. However, I used to, uh, any time I would get measles or anything like that, I would go to death's door. My brother never did. I could have the three-day measles and be half dead, you know, ear trouble and horrible things. And I never understood it. I lived like that. I was born in 1922, and in 1966, a man of God came to Los Angeles. We were living in the San Fernando Valley, and I don't know how. It was only a miracle of God that we heard that he was there. And he stay, He was going to have a seven-day meeting, and he asked Glenn to tape it. Or I, Anyway, Glenn taped it. I guess he asked us to come. And 
it was a meeting like I had never been in in my life. And I'd been in every kind of meetings from the Holy Roller, early Pentecost type to on, you know. But I had never been into a meeting like that. He stayed seven weeks. And to make a long story short, at the end of seven weeks, he says, there's five couples in this congregation that I want to come to your homes and pray for you privately. And praise God, we were one of the families. And he came, and I was really ready for deliverance. I had not gone up for deliverance. I was self-righteous, like Sister Cook. Her father was a minister for years and years. You know, that old self-righteousness, there's not enough talked about it from the pulpit, is there? You know, we heard lots of sin preaching. We knew not to drink. We knew not to smoke. We knew not to go to movies. We knew not to go to the dance hall or the bars. We knew not to marry unsaved boys. We knew all that. We got that kind of sin preached to us, and I praise God for that. However, we never got much, we never got anything about witchcraft preached to us. And, and this man of God, when he began, I was ready for deliverance. I mean, I was really ready. I had been crying out for deliverance after I heard him speak, and and he started coming against. He he named off. He could talk fast, and he was a big man, and he could talk fast. And we had a sunken living room, and he was on the main floor, and I was up in the dining room part, but I was about eye level with him. And he named off about 25 spirits that was in me from Jezebel on to the many bad things that I had no idea was in there. And all of a sudden, with a big poof, out they came. And I'll admit, I had not spoken in tongues. Our church was very dry. It was a big, big church. I had not spoken in tongues for years and years. And yet I grew up with my father who had divers tongues and, and the gifts of the Spirit. And he re, that released me. And one of the spirits that he came against was the spirit of death and the curse of death on me. And that was a little shocking. And I began to think about it later. And I remembered way back, my mother telling me the day I was born that my grandmother stomped her feet, pawed the floor, so to speak, and said she wished I would die. And she laid a curse on me. And I didn't know it was there, but he broke it. And my fetters, I felt chains literally drop off of me. And I remembered back all the times that the enemy that I didn't even know was in there had wounded me, had made me sick, had made me almost die. One time in the hospital, I, I was bleeding to death after a hysterectomy, and I was 33 or 34 years old. And a nurse heard somebody walking, and she got up in the night and walked down to the end of the hall. I'd been in there 17 days. They'd sent me home, told me I was going to be all right, and I was in much pain. She came back up the hall, and intensive care used to be across the hall from the nurse's station, and she saw blood running out my door. And I was literally almost bled to death. And this was before this man had prayed for me. And they came in. They they were sticking me all up and down, you know. And I, I was all, my veins were collapsed and everything. And they got some glucose in me. And and she, would, she made a big fuss about who that was walking. She couldn't see a soul walking. Ten years later at a full gospel convention in Calgary, Canada, we were having a Holy Ghost meeting, much like these meetings. Jewel Rose was leading him. He's an old uh, saint of God, gone to heaven now, but had once died, and they resurrected him. He came back to life, and uh, and he was having this wonderful meeting. I was sitting up in front by another girl, and he said, lay hands on the one next to you. Now, you know, we hear that a lot, and somebody may take that very lightly. She reached over. No, I reached over and touched her. She had her eyes closed, and she was very much deep in the spirit. And she jumped like this, and she said, oh, I was having a vision. I saw a little lamb laying in a pool of blood, wounded. And she said, there's two scriptures that go with that. One of them was, when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said to thee, live. The other one was, I washed thee with water and anointed thee with oil. I, I wrote the scriptures down where they were. They didn't, at that moment, they didn't mean a thing. I went upstairs that night. I never see Glenn during conventions. He's always 
with these tapes and everything, and I went up and I said, you know, some woman had a vision. Now, we didn't have visions in our church at that time. We'd had visions in early Pentecost, but this was much later, and we didn't have visions. I didn't understand any... I had My mother had a vision once, and Jesus come right up out of a lily and stood in our living room. And I knew about that, but we hadn't had any visions around us for a long time. We were dry. I was dry in my spirit. And uh, when I went upstairs, and I told Glenn about this, and I started reading it again, and I knew right away what it was. It was Jesus who walked by me and said, Live. And my doctor said, Irma, you have been to death's door so many times, I don't understand you, but you're going to live again. And I lived, and I came back better than ever. But I tell you, the devil had put me through so much. You know that I was once in a mental hospital. I was a total vegetable. They told Glenn, she'll never get over this. She, I didn't know a thing. They'd given me so many shock treatments. I'd been a supervisor at Lockheed Missiles, supervising two shifts, uh, 70 or 80 girls under me in reproduction and art and typing. And uh, in the early days of the missile division, I'd worked there five years. And I tell you, I was in a miserable shape. Glenn came home from work one night, and there I was, out of my mind. Well, the doctor said my brain goes at triple speed, and it just shut off. Well, I know now it was the enemy. It was my enemy trying to kill me again. But praise the Lord, he went to this church and he asked the, the people after about, I don't know, was it two months or so I was in there? Uh, three months. He said, Irma is no better. They say she'll never get any better. And he said, the Lord has showed me if you will fast and pray, she's going to get better. And he said, anybody that's interested, come up to the choir room upstairs after the meeting, and uh, and I will tell you what the Lord has showed me. He went up there. That was on Sunday morning. Monday, they started to fast. They were to come to the church. Ten or eleven intercessors showed up. Praise God for intercessors, or I would not be here today. And they began to pray, and they began to fast. And they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. All around the clock. Do you think it's, it's useless to fast? It isn't useless to fast. That humbles your soul. And we need, we have a case here today that I was just like him probably. But the Lord Jesus Christ is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that you can ask or think and more to. And you know, money went by and I was just gone, you know. Tuesday went by, Wednesday went by. Thursday morning, I woke up. I looked around. I saw nurses. I said to the girl in the bed beside me, had I been in another car wreck? I'd been in car wrecks. I had just been plummeted by the enemy, trying to kill me. But, but you know, I would always have a comeback and be as good as new again. See, the mercy of God, when Sister Cook sang that song, it was for me, the mercy of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, preserving me. I guess for this ministry, and I, I said, where is my husband and where are my children? And she says, oh, they come to see you on Saturday or Sunday or whenever, she said. I walked in the bathroom, and I took one look at myself. My hair was out about like this. I had longer hair then. And I thought, where in the world am I? And, what am I? and I looked around, and I saw these people. And I thought, where am I? And what am I doing here? And I saw my cosmetic case there and curlers. I put my head right under the faucet and washed my hair and put it up. Came back in, talked to the girl some more, asked her questions. My mind was coming right back. And when Glenn came to get me or come to see me on Saturday, I was up and in my right mind. Because of Jesus because of Jesus. And I'm telling you, that hit me at my house. I don't even remember all about what happened, but my memory started to come back. They had knocked every brain out of me with all these shock treatments. Three of them were still in sodium pentothal. The rest of them, they just came in with their cases and took off my watch and rings, and I began to scream because they'd hooked me all up. 
and throw me into convulsions, and I'd be out for a day or two. And I don't, I tell you, that is a horrible thing. And, and within, uh, this was in the spring sometime, and in the meantime, Lockheed Missiles moved to Northern California, and I went to RCA, and first I went as a secretary to a banker, president of a bank, went back to work, and in about a month or two, uh, through circumstances of somebody coming into the bank, uh, I went to RCA and hired in as a department manager. Back into my right mind. Now, some of you may not think we're in our right minds here, <laughs> but I'm telling you, Jesus, Jesus has made me whole. There's hopes for, there are so many people calling us there. They have my mental problems and, and I can have compassion on those with mental problems. Uh, because of what I have gone through, and I'll tell you, uh, we've had, we've had, I look over your faces, I see people that has been here since the beginning, I see people that has come, uh, year after year, and how you have changed, and your, your minds are clearing, and there's, I see people that have been divorced, and they've come here for prayer, and they have remarried, they're happy, and many of them are, are praying deliverance wherever they kind of live. I praise God for the Moody's. I praise God for every ministry, and especially the deliverance ministries. I praise God for this man that, that listened to the voice of the Lord, like Mary said, and obeyed the Lord and, and called us up and said, Could I please come to your house? Well, I had so much pride and self-righteousness, so the, I didn't really want to come up in front of the congregation of the righteous because, you know, I, because of pride and self-righteousness. But I'm telling you, when he came to our house and he prayed, I was ready for deliverance. I had heard a few sermons about it, and I knew from, I knew from the moment I heard the first sermon on deliverance that there was something in me holding me back, keeping me from God's best. I didn't know what it was. But that man deserved, and I'm telling you, uh, I, I like that scripture I read yesterday afternoon. Shouldn't I do this? Shouldn't I keep on doing this? Luke 13:32. when Jesus called Herod the fox, he says, I will, this is New American Standard, I will keep on casting out demons. Do you blame me? When I found out I had an enemy, I mean, I was after him from that day on. I was after him. I didn't know much about it at first, but I'm telling you, he started, the Lord started teaching us. I will keep on casting out demons. I will keep on doing miracles. I will keep on healing today. This is Jesus' words. Tomorrow and the third day I will reach my destination or my perfection. We've been hearing about the first day and the second day, and we're coming into the third day. People, we're coming into something. We are coming into something. And, and people may say, oh, it's the flesh. Of course it's the flesh. The other night I was meditating. Uh, in the middle of the night, I pray a lot. And I was meditating, and I was meditating about this scripture, and uh, meditating about, about even my my own father said, honey, you don't have any evil spirits in you. And I said, but I do. And he says, no, you've always been a good girl. I said, well, there's something in me. No, 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 he wouldn't give in to it, you know. But but I was meditating, and he always says, well, it's just the flesh. Of course it's the flesh. That's where the evil spirits live. And the other night the Holy Spirit said to me, or God said to me, do you think the enemy would attack the Holy Ghost in you? He said he wouldn't dare to attack the Holy Ghost in you. He only attacks in your flesh where the Holy Spirit has not uh, occupied yet. We have many channels inside of us, many little rooms, but the Holy Spirit is penetrating, and the more of the bad guys you get out, if you don't want to say devil, that is, I didn't used to want to say that, but when you get these things out of you, the self-righteousness, this pride, this envy, this jealousy, this arrogance and all of this, then the Holy Spirit can take up activity in you, and you'll go from a 30-fold Christian 
to a 40, to a 50, to a 60-fold Christian, and you'll keep moving up. Now, I'm not there yet, but it's my goal. I press toward that prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We can say, we can laugh, we can make fun, we can do all of this, but I'm telling you, we've got cases in here that need more help, that need more deliverance, and every one of us should be on our faces praying for those kind of people. They're in every church. They're in, they're in, they're all over. The enemy is coming down with all of his fury because the Holy Spirit's coming down with all of his fury. Now, uh, I don't know how they want to conduct this healing service, but that's all I want to say right now. But I praise Jesus. I thank the Lord for light, dispelling the darkness that was in me. And I didn't know it was in there, but I praise God. I thank Him. I praise Him. Thank you. Well, I didn't know she was going to preach. Amen. Turn with me over to Psalms 103. We will go through some scriptures. I told her I wanted to say something, and she said, Oh, no, I don't want to. What if, what if she wanted to say something? <laughs> Psalms, 100, <clears throat> Psalms 103. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And we've been remembering some of his benefits here, here this morning. His benefits are many. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Bless his holy name. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender, tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, and those good things are praise and worship unto him. To, re, to repeat the goodness of the Lord, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Isaiah 53, verse 3. <clears throat> he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our sicknesses and carried our pain. Yet we did not esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our lawlessness. The chastisement of our soundness of our, or our mind was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed by and through his name. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Verse 14, 52. Many were astonished at thee. His vis visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Matthew 27, Matthew 27, verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The Roman soldiers who were given the place of scourging a person held pride in the fact that they could rip the flesh off of a man's back and hardly make him bleed. And they held pride in the fact that they could rip him without tearing his ribs out. And they took Jesus and tied him to a post. And a Roman soldier took that scourge, tied with pieces of lead and steel and bone, and ripped his back open. And so marred him, poured out his beard, that he was a man that was undesirable. And to look on him, you could not recognize him. And that was done that you and I might come today and have healing and restoration and deliverance. For it's in the name of Jesus, and by his stripes, there's healing and restoration for everyone who names the name of Jesus. For it is written that he is Lord, and in his name we shall set the captives free. 
First Peter chapter 2, First Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bear our sins <clears throat> in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes I was healed. Father, forgive me my unbelief. Help me, Lord, to apply your word and make it to live as a reality within me. By his stripes I was, you were healed. Psalms 107. Psalms 107. 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. We have a word. His word is a living word. And he's given it unto us. He said, in my name you cast out devils, heal the sick, and raise the dead. And Lord, help us to have the faith to stand forth and declare and make that a reality in our midst. Acts chapter 10, yes, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And then what does he say? Well, let's look at Luke chapter 9. See what the Word says that he done. And then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power <clears throat> and authority over all devils to cure diseases. He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God <clears throat> and to heal the sick. Matthew 10, we pick that up again. Matthew 10 and verse 8, he says, <clears throat> verse 7, he says, Go ye preach, saying, The kingdom <clears throat> of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. The word's given to us freely, and we're to freely return it and give it back. Now, in James chapter 5, the commission is further extended. In the fifth chapter of James, verse 13, says, <clears throat> Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. For the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So he gave his disciples authority and charged them to go, declare that the kingdom was at hand, and to heal the sick, deliver the leper, and raise the dead. And he's given, then he's extended now that same charge unto all of us to do likewise. And here in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 again it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body and on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Every one of us was dead in our sins. By the grace of the Lord Jesus and His mercy, He has extended unto us salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus. And then He has also extended unto us healing through His stripes at the whipping post, where He was, where He has taken for us and for me, for you, and, and bore the sickness and diseases that we bear in our physical bodies. And He says, and I say, Lord, help thou mine unbelief that I can believe and apply to my heart and life, and apply to each person present in this place the authority and the power and the word of the living God to set them free in the name of the Lord Jesus, that in Jesus' name the captives shall go free. Turn with me and read once again the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Praise you, Jesus. <clears throat> Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the Lord, arm of the Lord revealed? Lord, help us to believe and help us to hide it in our heart with faith to apply it. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Lord, give us a broken and a contrite spirit to cry and be intercessors on behalf of your people. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our sicknesses and hath carried our pain. And yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for my lawlessness and for your lawlessness. And the chastisement of my soundness was laid upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And I and all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. And in his mercy and his grace, he's extended unto us his grace. And we have come back and come back and return unto him, and he will receive us and accept us. And say, I never, I never knew, for I've forgiven. And I've buried it in the deepest sea to remember it no more. Others remember, but Jesus does not remember. We like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. But we're complainers. He is bought, he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? I shall declare his generation. Hallelujah! Glory! He made his, he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, and thou, and when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and that he has done. And he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his, in his hand. And he shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear my iniquities and yours. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he, Jesus, bare my sins and the sins of many, and has made intercession for my transgressions. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that it is written that you have given unto us the authority of your word, that in your name we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, and if they have committed any sins they shall be forgiven them. We shall cast out devils and set the captives free. We stand today to proclaim that in your name we do that. Father, we thank you for, for hearing our petitions and for answering our prayers and standing with us as we stand in faith to set the captives free, to raise up those that are, that, that have, uh, that are afflicted and to release those from bondage and bound by satanic power. In the name of the Lord Jesus, praise the Lord. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind the satanic power in David, and whether he be here or at home or wherever he be, the days that lie ahead, I bind the satanic power of Satan, and I take authority over you and David, and if he committed any sins, I, co I remit them today in the name of the Lord Jesus, and I loose him from the bondage and powers of Satan, and I loose him to a right mind to come to a knowledge of the saving power of the Lord Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I decree, Satan, that you shall set him free, and it shall be done in the name of Jesus. I bind you to the day of judgment, every evil power and spirit that, is, that resides in David, and I loose him from it, and I set him free in the name of the Lord Jesus. That in Jesus' name, he shall declare that Jesus is Lord, and stand forth to glorify God. In Jesus' name. And I bind every evil power to the day of judgment, and I ask the angels of the Lord to take them and, and keep them so until Jesus shall judge them. In Jesus' name, I declare it is written so, and it shall come to pass. Praise you, Lord. I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I thank you for it, Jesus. I praise you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, that it shall be so. I praise you for it in Jesus' name. 
Father, it's not what I see today, but I speak it to be so in the name of the Lord. It shall come to pass in Jesus' name. I speak it to be so. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if there's any others here who need prayer for, uh, for things in the physical body that we haven't already prayed for you, I ask you to come and, and we'll lay hands on you and pray for you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. All right? First of all, we'll anoint David with oil and all of you ministers. Huh? Daniel, I'm sorry. Daniel. His name is Daniel. Satan knows who I'm talking about, and so does the Lord. Very nice. All right. Uh, Brother McFadden, uh, come and, and help us minister this morning. One, one scripture I want to just read. That's all the Lord. It's just it's been burning in my mind ever since we started the praise service. It's Matthew 4, verse 17. The Lord just put it on me. It says, From that time Jesus began to preach. And to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is the kingdom of heaven. When you see the captives being set free, you're seeing the coming of the kingdom at that time. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Father, I thank you for the privilege we have to come and let Daniel. Daniel, up before you this morning. Father, I come and stand in his behalf, in his behalf of the priest. Yes. All these, my brethren, stand with me. We anoint him with oil. For it is written to do so, and we lay hands on him. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree and, 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 and declare that he shall be set free and become ever with whole. So I thank you for it, Father. And I thank you for hearing our petition, for we come, come in the name of the Lord Jesus and decree it to be so, for it is written. Yes. Now, if there, if there be any others here who would desire prayer this morning, we will pray for you before we close this service. Any that we haven't prayed for previous, if you'd like, uh, or any even that we have prayed for, if you want to come and be prayed for again, get up and come up here right now. Praise you, Lord. Father, we come and anoint the oil. We come against every spirit that hinders in his mind. I bind it to the day of judgment. I take it to the day of judgment. I release it from the day of judgment. I take it to the day of judgment. And I curse it. And I loose it from the day of judgment. And I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Barbara. Father, we anoint Barbara with oil. Lord, whatever the condition is, yes, that Lord, she needs heal her, Lord, touch her, Lord, minister life to her, Lord. We speak restoration to her in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We speak restoration to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Linda, come up here and pray for you. Linda, we come in the name of the Lord Jesus. We speak to the divine powers that are trying to destroy this physical body. And I curse him by the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus. Amen. By his stripes Woo. I speak healing to this physical body in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Her physical body. Father, Father, we have the soil in the name of the Lord. We speak to this physical That's body so to receive the healing virtue of the Lord. Body, we speak to you to receive the healing virtue of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we anoint our brother with oil. Heal the body. 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 Heal the Praise you. Amen. Amen. Father, we lay hands on this young man. He love us. 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 And we curse it in the name of the Lord. And we will speak restoration to him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we lay hands on our brother. We curse it in the name of the Lord. We curse it in the name of the Lord. And pass away in Jesus' name. And speak it to me. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we anoint our sister with oil. We lay hands on her according to your word. We speak to the condition that exists in her body. And we curse it in the name of Jesus. And we speak restoration to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Body, receive ye the virtue of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. Lord. Father, we love and bring our sister. We stand against satanic power. We curse her. The we curse her. The demonic powers that try to harass her. I bind and break the dominion over her. Let I loose her to serve and praise and worship the Lord. Amen and amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Father. Father, we lay hands on our sister. Yes, Lord. Well, Father, energy. We, we read the word this morning, and it's written that you said you will renew us as the eagle. And now, Father, we speak strength and health to our physical and to our sister's physical body. Amen. Receive ye the strength of the Lord and be renewed as the eagle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we come and anoint Barbara with oil. We lift her up before you and we lay hands on her. Father, you said that if she called for the elders of the church and lay hands on her, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. that you would heal and raise up and restore. Now, Father, we appropriate the word of the Lord to Barbara, and by his stripes we speak healing, by receive ye the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we anoint our sister with oil. Lord. Lord. We lay hands on her. And Lord, we decree by the stripes of the Lord Name Jesus, Jesus healing to this physical body. Name it is Jesus. written that if we would lay hands on her and pray, that you would raise them up. And we've done that, and in Jesus' name we speak healing and restoration Amen. to this physical body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, our brother comes. Oh, we lay hands on him. Father, we decree Jesus that his need shall be met, Jesus and that your wisdom and guidance Jesus shall be his portion. And Father, we pray for the physical need that yes, he has. Lord. We speak the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus by his stripes into this physical body. Father, he receives the healing virtue of the Lord in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Father, our sister comes. He loves us. So you have a body. Father, your word says that Minister if the elders would lay hands on her and anoint her with oil, that your, and by Wicked your stripes there's healing Wicked for the physical body. So now, in body, I speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by his stripes, receive ye the healing virtue of the Lord. Wither and dry up Amen. and pass away, whatever the cause be, I speak restoration in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, praise the Lord. Father, we come and anoint Reba with oil. We lay hands on it according to your word. Yes, Lord. We speak restoration to this physical body. Body, I command you to receive strength and health and the physical restoration of the living Christ. The flow and move within you in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the stripes of the Lord, there is healing and restoration. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command this body to receive strength and life in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lay hands on Glenn and anoint him with oil. God, Father, I speak to this mind and I speak to this body. I command restoration to begin. I command it to restore itself. I command this, but this body to receive the healing virtue and this mind to receive restoration by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak restoration to him in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, praise you, Lord. Amen, amen. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we come and anoint Rosalie with oil. We lay hands on her. We speak to the need in this body in Jesus' name. We speak to it. And we have, and Father, your word says for that the little children deny them not to come unto thee. And Father, we speak to Rosalie, this young lady that's growing up to be a young lady in thee. And we speak, Lord, that unto her will come will come the, the word of the living God. And she will come into obedience to it, to both the word of the Lord and, and obedience to her parents. Amen. And we thank you for it. I bind every hindered spirit. I curse it in Jesus' name. And I loose this body to receive the healing virtue of the Lord. And this mind to receive the word of the Lord. And to receive uh, uh, the, the, the word of her parents. And to stand and obey it without, without rebelling against it. I come against rebellion. I curse it. I curse rebellion from the ancestral line. I rebuke it. I break the power of it. And I loose it from her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we anoint with oil. We come in behalf of our sister. We lift her up before you, Lord. Lord, yes, I curse Jesus any ancestral heritage that is, has, has, has the right to this physical body. I put the blood to cleanse and to wash it. I break satanic power. I loose this body to come into obedience to the word of the living God. I loose her from, from, from other uh, physical ailments within her physical body. And I apply the blood of the Lord Jesus and the stripes of the living Christ 
to bring healing and restoration. Body, I command you to respond. Body, I command you to respond. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus to respond. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father, we come in the name of the Lord Jesus and lay hands on our brother. I know him with oil and we stand as priests in his behalf today. Yes. We bring up any sin he's committed, Lord. We ask you to forgive him. And Lord, we, we and, then, and then, Lord, we come and as we lay hands on him and anoint him with oil, we come against any physical condition in this physical body and I curse it. And I curse it, and I curse it, and I curse it, and I command this body to receive the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus. Yes. I command it to be strong and Amen. well. Amen. I command it to be strong and well yes. by the stripes of the living Christ. Amen. I speak to this body to receive the healing virtue Amen. of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen, 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 and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Praise you, Jesus. Father, we come and lift David up. Amen. Amen. We know him with oil. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for him in the past. Father, we praise you for restoration in this body. We thank you for what you're doing for him today. We thank you, Lord, for all that we've seen that's happened in his life and the restoration that's come to him. But, Father, we thank you for our greater restoration, our complete restoration. And, body, I speak to you and I speak to this mind and I bind it to the kingdom of the living God and I speak a restoration to it. Hallelujah. That only can come by the stripes and the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I speak to this body to become whole and strong in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. I bless your name, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for the authority of your name and your word. I praise you for it, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Now, Father, we anoint our brother with oil. We lay hands on him. And we as brethren, Lord, lift up any sins that he may have committed. We commit him unto thee in the blood of the Lord Jesus to cleanse. Now we bring his physical body and, and condition before you. And I curse it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, body, I command you to be strong strong and well Amen. and whole. I command Amen. healing into this body in the name of the Lord. Amen. Be thou whole and well in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father, I lay hands on this, my sister, and I speak to the condition of this physical body. And I loose her in Jesus' name. 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 And I speak healing and restoration by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. So be it. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the privilege. Of lifting my brother up before Amen. you. Yes, Lord. And thank you for the privilege of anointing with oil and laying hands on him. Bringing his condition, Lord, yes, physically Lord. or mentally, yes. whatever it might be, and whatever it is, Hallelujah. before thee. And then, Father, by the stripes of your Son, the Lord Jesus, yes. I speak healing and restoration Amen. into this physical body. Yes, Lord. And I command the healing virtue yes, of the Lord Jesus. Go into this physical Lord. body. Body, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command you receive the healing virtue of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be thou well and strong. Be thou healed in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, I bring my brother. Father, I speak first. Yes. To his mind. I speak peace to him. I speak peace to him. To his mind. Yes, Lord. I speak wisdom to him. Amen. I speak wisdom. I speak patience, Lord. Oh, the patience of Job, I speak to him, Lord. I speak peace to him, Lord. The peace, Lord. The peace that passeth all understanding. I speak to him in Jesus' name. Now, Father, he's come for his self. He's not asking. He has, oh, Lord, we've come and we've brought his son before you. And we thank you, Lord, that you've taken care of that and that you'll come to pass. Now, Father, we come in his behalf. And I know him with oil. Yeah. I lay hands on him. Lord. I thank you for giving us faith and him faith to believe. And whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be so. And Father, we lay hands on him by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. We speak complete healing and restoration into this physical body. We speak strength and wisdom to him. We speak discernment and understanding to him. We speak the patience of Job to him. And we thank you for it. And Father, we stand with him. To see a complete healing and deliverance and restoration yes. of his son Daniel. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Honor his faith, Lord. 
Honor his faith. And honor his, honor his wife's faith. Yes, Lord. And coming, Lord. Yes, Lord. Honor their faith, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Praise amen. Lord. amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise Lord. Father, we come and bring Linda up. Oh, yes, Lord. We lift up the back yes, condition and any oh, other ailment. Yes. Father, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, I speak healing. I command yes. healing into yes. this physical body. Yes. I command it to become whole and right. Yes. I command this back to be strong and straight. I, I command I restoration into this body. I Father, I, I, I speak to this voice that it shall be strong and well. I speak to it in Jesus' name. She'll be, that's, that her voice shall be able to praise and magnify thee. Declaring the word of the Lord, wherever you lead her and guide her, and she shall be a blessing to thy people in Lord, Jesus' name. Nerve. Hallelujah. We yes. come against the nervous condition. Yes, yes we do. We yes. curse it. How, curse it in Jesus. Yes. yes. Curse it in Jesus. Loose. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we come and anoint Bill with oil, and we lift him up before you. Father, I curse this condition in his throat. So put that I try to keep him from, from praising and magnifying Amen. Him. Father, he's a minstrel in the house of the Lord. Father, a minstrel in the house of the Lord. He's voice to praise with. Amen. I speak to this voice, Father, yes, and I Lord. speak to this throat. I speak to it to become strong in Jesus' name. And I speak any other need in this physical body. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus, I speak healing into this physical body. Father, receive you the, the healing virtue of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 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 So be it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Father, I come and bring it. Soldier of the cross. Father, she's come to thee with a need. Father, and you're the answer to her need. Father, I lift her up before you. Yes. Father, the trials of life have been many. Father, she's been faithful. Yes. Now, Father, she has a need. Father, this soldier of the cross, we lay hands on her. <laughs> I have on you with oil. I lift her up before thee. And your word, it is written that by your stripes, we are healed. And I decree, it is written, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, Amen. I speak healing to this physical body. Amen. I command strength to come into it. Yes. I command to be strong and well. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. so be it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.